Welcome to Mbuya Parent School and Kindergarten, situated in Kampala City with modern, well equipped facilities plus extensive playing fields and amenities. Mbuya Parent School believes that a better future lies where children know how to find and create balances in themselves and the world around them. This explains our fusion of academic subjects and co curricular activities. There are many opportunities presented to them to flourish both in and outside the classroom. I want to become a president when I grow up. Yeah, I want to be a pilot. I will be the best fashion designer. Mbuya Parent School, the sky is our limit. Hello dear learners, I thank God for your life. I thank God for my life too. Let us keep observing the guidelines as given to us by the Ministry of Health and together we shall fight COVID-19 out of our country. My name is Marvelous Nwavasa and today I'll be facilitating lesson two. The last time we met, we looked at vocabulary linked to print media and I left you with an exercise and I would like us to look at the corrections. Uh, our question one was list five names of newspapers that you have ever seen or you have ever read. Now these are several of them but we came up with some examples. Uh, the most common we have New Vision, we have Daily Monitor, we have Rupini, we have Ormuri, we have the Red Paper, we have the East African and so many others. Our question two was why do people read newspapers? Now, the reasons why people read newspapers are also several. People read newspapers for different reasons, such as uh, looking for information. People read newspapers uh, for entertainment. People new read newspapers for leisure. People read newspapers, look for jobs, and so many other reasons. A uh, question three was, requiring you to construct sentences using the vocabulary that we learned that day. And the, the tip here is that the word, the sentence that you come up with should be correctly written. It should be well punctuated. It should have correct spelling and it should make, some se it should make sense. It has to be a meaningful sentence. So this is just an example of a correct sentence, but I know out there, each one of you has their sentences or sentence and they are correct. My father reads newspapers, but we, have, we had several words. We had magazine, we had the brochure, we had newsletter, and we had flyer. So these ones are just sample sentences uh, whereby we have used our new words. So for today's lesson, we are going to look at comprehension work. When I talk of comprehension work, that is the part when we look at passages, when we look at dialogues, the part where we look at poems, we look at maps, we look at tables, we look at calendars, and so many other things. For this lesson in particular, we are going to have a passage. And before we have a passage, let us first remind ourselves of some of the vocabulary that we looked at under print media. Yes, good. We looked at the word brochure, correct. I think we remember what a brochure is. That is a booklet containing information and pictures about a company or an organization. We looked at the word newsletter, and here we had a very good example of Mbuya parents' newsletter. We also looked at the word pull out, and we say this is the part of a newspaper which you can take out and read separately. You can even keep it separately. We looked at uh, also the word newspapers, and that's what we started with by giving examples of newspapers in Uganda. Now, let us have our story. So in this story, dear learners, I expect you to read each and every word in this story, each and every line, each and every paragraph. Make sure that as you're reading, you can highlight some key words. You can also highlight the vocabulary that we looked at uh, in our introduction about vocabulary. You can also look at other words that have 
that you have found out to be new to you, and then later on using the dictionary, we can learn these words. It is very important that you read through the whole passage. As you were reading this story, are there any words that you have come across and are new to you? Yes? Okay. So you're going to give me those words and then we shall learn them together. Which word was new to you? Okay. He says the word uh, cartoon. Uh, which word, which other word was new according to you? Okay. The word journalist. Thank you. The word uh, cartoon. The word popular. Yes, someone has given the word proofread. Okay. We are going to learn this word so quickly. I am... I am I'm thinking that the word cartoon is something we know. Most of you every day, every morning, every evening, you like watching cartoon films. But when we talk of cartoons in newspapers, these are amusing pictures, funny drawings that we commonly find in newspapers and also in magazines. And then when it comes to a journalist, this is a person whose job is to collect news stories and uh, the word uh, the word popular in simple terms it means common most loved that's what it means in simple terms and this word is proofread in the story it is proofread and uh, the, the the infinitive form of this word is proofread it depends in which tense it is and to proofread it simply means to read a text with an aim of correcting mistakes, if at all they are there. So learners, we normally encourage you that whenever you write your work, before you present it for marking, you should also proofread, such that you correct any mistakes that could be there at an early stage. Now let us have fun with these words. You're going to give one word which means the same as the following. Number one, uh, what do we call a person whose job is to collect news? Is that person a cartoon? Is that person a journalist? Is that person, is our answer popular or proofread? Who can answer that? Fantastic, someone has said journalist, that's correct. Uh, what do we call to read a document with the purpose of correcting mistakes? Thank you. That is to proofread. Uh, what do we call amusing pictures or funny drawings, usually in newspapers or in magazines? Fantastic. Those are cartoons. Then, what is that one word that refers to being loved or, more or commonly read by most people. Great. That is the word popular. So, let us have some oral activity. We have read the story. We have read the passage. How many paragraphs does the passage have? Thank you very much. Someone has said that the passage has three paragraphs. Another question, in which paragraph do we find the examples of print media? If you read the story, in which paragraph do we find the examples of proof media, of print media? Mention at least four items newspapers contain. What is contained in newspapers? Okay, photographs, cartoons, Stories, very good. Those are some of the examples of items that newspapers contain. Then, when are newspapers ready for sale? You will be able to answer this question if you have read up to the very last paragraph. Uh, now, with, the, with, with you, I'll leave you an exercise 
you will have to read through these questions and attempt them correctly. But here are some guidelines. When you are going to answer questions about a given text, you're expected to read that text not less than twice. You have to read it for at least more than two times. And as you read your story, I earlier told you, go on highlighting or underlining some key ideas and some key words. That one will help you to easily locate the answers for the question given in your text. When you come and read a question, for example, question one, what kinds of print media are mentioned in the passage? You will go back and read the passage, and from there you will identify those keywords. You will identify the answer. Now, when you, I, you have identified the answer in the text, that is not how you just lift it and you come and place it that it is the answer. No, you have to modify it to make sure that it suits the tense that has been used in the question. Oh, when, you have asked, when you have done that, another thing you have to take note of is that in English, every sentence you write must be correctly punctuated and must always be, and the words in that sentence must have correct spellings. Uh, another important thing you have to take note of, let's look at question three. Why do you think newspapers are delivered very early in the morning? Now you go in the text, you will find there the answer to this question. But the way of answering it, the approach, there are some key words that you, you must not leave out. Which ones are those? For example, they are saying, why do you think newspapers are delivered very early in the morning? The word think here is very key. The word delivered here is very key. The time early in the morning is very key. So you have to take note of the key words. The next, the next item that you have to pay attention to is to follow the instruction of the question. There are some questions which require you to give the answer in full form, whereas there are those questions which require you to just state, to just put there the answer, and you don't have to write the whole sentence. And an example of such a question is number five. They're saying, suggest another word or group of words to mean the same as daily. Now here, when you see the instruction, is suggest. The word used there is suggest. Or they can use the word write. Or they can use the word mention. So in such a case, you don't have to write a full sentence. You just put there what is, you just put there what you feel is your correct answer. When it comes to questions that have, that begin with why, these ones are demanding you to give a reason why something is done or why it happens that way. Therefore, there are some conjunctions which we commonly use when we are answering questions that have begun with why. And those are conjunctions such as because, you can use in order, you can use so as, you can use such that, you can use so that. Those five conjunctions, they help us to attempt questions which have been set beginning with why. And I'm not saying that you use all the five, no. Out of the five, you choose one which is most suitable for that matter. Thank you very much for your attention. The next time we meet, we shall... Thank you very much for your attention. You have been a very wonderful class. I love you so much. Bye-bye.